Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. We are from group 4. We'll present about career planning. First of all, let me introduce my group members. Me, Nur Fazana binti Sabtu, Najah Alia binti F1, Nur Afifa binti Mustafa, Nur Afifa binti Amran, Fatin Amira binti Fuad, Kishalini daughter of Sivati Raja and the last one, Nantini daughter of Kunju. So, what is career planning? Career planning is a systematic approach to identify one's career aspirations and mapping out the course toward achieving those aspirations, helping employees plan their careers in terms of their abilities and the organization's demand in terms of this perspective. A career might be developing inside a single employer or across multiple organizations. As a process within the company, career planning is the aspect of human resource functions that focuses on providing path for workers to develop inside the organization throughout time. Career planning is the practice of continuously evaluating and planning one's career's goal, desires, and skill. Career planning is the ongoing process of self-discovery, career objective, skill development, and job search. In career planning, employee determines their career goals and lay out a plan to achieve those goals. Individual employees may also be counseled on their various career options as part of career planning. It is a way to assist employees in growing by providing them with a sense of where they should be going. From an organization perspective, career planning enables employees to plan their careers while considering their talents and the organization's needs. Next, I will pass to Fatin for the next presentation. Now, I will present about the relationship of assessment to the career planning process. Before that, let me explain to you the seven steps in career planning process. The first one is become aware of the need to make career decision. Generally, people will short circuit this complex process with heuristic and biases that allow them to make career decisions more quickly and with much less mental effort. Counselor may use some assessment instrument at this step of the process to gather information about their level of awareness as well as their specific needs when they begin. Second step is learn about or evaluate vocational self-concept. It is critical to concentrate on the client who must concentrate on himself throughout the stage of the process. The client may be asked to complete a checklist, a card sort, or a dream as part of an informal assessment and this can be useful for clients who have trouble speaking freely in an interview. The counselor may use inventory or test of interest, skill, abilities, values, or personality characteristic if formal assessment is used. Step 3. Identify occupational alternatives. At this point, the counselor and the client are looking for occupations or employment where the client can put his or her vocational self-concept into action. When the client is given an assessment in paper form, they are usually accompanying manuals that link the client's score to the job titles. A customized list of related vacations can be provided as a part of the score report when the assessment is administered by a computer. Step 4. Obtain information about identified alternatives. Clients are urged to obtain substantial knowledge about possible jobs through reading career materials using computer, databases and websites, job shadowings and information interviewing at this stage. At this point, assessment is not commonly used. Step 5. Make tentative choices from among available occupations. At this point, the client, with the help of the counselor, is comparing options and seeking to eliminate some while prioritizing others. Here, values are used as a filter to identify which of the options is the most important. Counselor may use a values card sort, checklist, or inventory such as follow-through that will include the client's inquiry to establish the ability of each occupation under consideration to fulfill the work values regarded as the most essential. Step 6. Make educational choices. At this step, websites like ACT map of college major, or the college board site might help the client to find possible majors or training specialties. Other example is the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery that helps people to choose training programs in the armed branches based on their interests and talents. The last step is implement a vocational choice. At this step, client enter the job market. Many organizations have their own instrument for screening applicants for job. 
Some instruments are used to determine a specific position, profile a person's skill in certain area, or compare them to the level of skills needed in those same areas for specific jobs within an organization. The career planning process is cyclical and iterative. A person may hold a job in step 7 for a period of time and then move to step 1 again because of dissatisfaction with the job. Also, note that career deciders may deal with the task of one step such as identifying occupational alternatives in step 3 and then return to do more in-depth introspection in step 2. There are three purposes of assessment to the career planning. The first one is learning more about the needs of an individual or group. Counselors commonly ask clients to describe their motivations for entering a therapy relationship in other contexts where greater one-on-one -on -one attention is given. Many clients are aware enough to be able to describe their wants with great possessions. Others are able to explain the conditions that they are experiencing without comprehending the underlying causes. Certain assessment may be administered by a counselor in order to accurately define the student's or client needs. Next is learning more about the characteristic of individuals and helping them learn more about themselves. Self-attributes that most often proposed by theories are interests, abilities, skills, values, and personality characteristics. Knowledge of all of these characteristics can be helpful to both the client and the counselor in synthesizing a self-image that can be batched to an environment. This might improve clients' understanding toward their needs when they get to know themselves better. Last but not least, determining the change or progress of an individual or group. Some assessment instruments are designed to measure academic success, interests, or specific circumstances such as career maturity or career decision making throughout time, allowing for the establishment of benchmark at a specific stages in a person's development. It is easy to get a picture of a person's growth by comparing advancements, change, or stability throughout time. Career is frequently divided into two categories which are internal career and external career. Internal career is the stages that contain individuals' concept of career advancement within an occupation, while external career is the objective categories used by society and organization to describe the progression of someone's career. In the context of an organization, a career is a path that people take in the position they feel during their working life. According to John Holland's theory of career choice, our career are determined by the interaction of our personality and our environment because most people feel more comfortable working with people who share their personality type. Holland's theory has six personality types which are realistic, investigate, social, conventional, enterprising and artistic. Realistic people are likely to be shy, stable and practical. They solve problems by taking action rather than talking about them. They invest Next, investigate personality type is more analytical and independent. They prefer to work with information and prefer to work alone rather than in groups. For social type personality, they enjoy teaching or assisting other. Other than that, a conventional type personality enjoys rules and regulation. They dislike unclear work because they are more practical and efficient. Next, the personality under enterprising are ambitious and energetic. They enjoy meeting new people influencing and encouraging others and running their own businesses. Lastly, people of the artistic type are more creative, intentive and emotionally aware than other Holland types. They are self-sufficient but enjoy collaborating with others. Moving on, individual models of career stage and development consist six models which are Super Life Stage Model, the Levinson Model, Scene Model 1978, the Greenhouse Model 1987, Bart and Crumb Model 1983, and Integrated Model. Super's life stage model is founded on the idea that self-concept will alter through time and evolve as a result of experience gather. The, there are five stages in this model. The first stage is grow in terms of their career world. Second stage, explore then self in career world then choose a right career. Third stage is to establish the position and opportunities in organization. The fourth stage, constant adjustment in career progression. And the last stage, explain about the transition out from the job. The Levinson model mentioned that each stage defined by an event or action that lead to the following step. The stages begin with uh, with early adult transition which an individual make decision regarding adulthood. 
followed by the second stage, a person makes specific decision about their career. Third stage, focus on changes or adjustment on work. And the next stage, show how people begins to act like like an adult. The fifth stage is how the person starts to evaluate their life, while the next stage, commit to new decision on retirement. And the last stage, show retirement from the career. Next is scene model 1978. This type of model almost has same stages with other types of model that I have mentioned earlier. Start with first stage in searching for the career. Next, entry to the career world with basic training. And after that, start full-time job. On stage 4 is mid-career and followed by the last stage is late career and decline. Moving on to the greenhouse model 1987, it focuses on the individual process of defining career goals. The five stages of the greenhouse model are stage 1 for preparation for work, stage 2 entry to organizational work, stage 3 is to establish the career, stage 4 is the feeling of being trapped in your current job and the last stage is late career and prepare for the retirement. For the bed and crumb model 1983, this type of model consists of four stages that started with the establishment, progress, maintenance and retirement. The last model is integrated model. The first stage is foundation of career that consists of childhood and teenage experiences. The second stage is the career entry by joining additional professional development. The third stage is advancement to organization and followed by the fourth stage, people will evaluate uh, their current career. Next stage, reinforcement the, car, uh, the current career or develop new career. On the stage six, most people will quit from working life except who have complete their life progress and the last stage is retirement. The Big Five personality has proven beneficial in providing a basis for categorizing personality features in their career. Firstly, person who score high in emotional stability on a career test tend to be emotionally stable and peaceful, while people with high neuroticism are extremely emotionally reactive. Secondly, people with high extraversion are more comfortable in social circumstances, while introversion people find social circumstances are exhausting. Next, people who are open to new experiences are more likely to be intellectually curious, creative and imaginative contrast to other people that prefer to remain with what they know and afraid of changes. For agreeableness people, they are motivated in assisting others in positive way. Meanwhile, someone with low score on the street is manipulative and act less nice to others. Lastly, someone with high conscientiousness are more attentive, detail-oriented and have strong self-control. Plus, they are also aware that their action and decision have an impact on others. But for people low score of this trait, have a harder time keeping organized and focus on a goal. Now, I will talk about organizational career system. Organizational career system refers to well-planned strategic practices available within the organization to support and aid career development among their employees. Along with promoting employees' personal career development by assessing what is the expectation from the career and creating the opportunities, organizations also strive to fulfill their demands and goals uh, through this system. This is because employees' development in knowledge, attitude, and skills through the intervention of career system, uh, they will be able to benefit the organization with better performance and outcome. The collaborative setting between organization and employees in developing careers of employees uh, can be clearly explained using pluralistic approach in organizational career system. This approach suggests that exposing employees from various organizational structure in activities such as exchanging feedback on their career concept, uh, sharing opinions and encouragement, and take on responsibility uh, in other organizational structure tasks provide chances to the employees to challenge yourself and identify their own competencies and organizational leadership to extend their career path type of method often used uh, in organization 
who practice pluralistic settings, uh, career counseling, contracts, and cafeteria method. Moving on, there are three main elements of organizational career development system. Firstly, person system, where the employees is given opportunities to explore their own past experience along with their knowledges, uh, skills and attitudes in their own career. Secondly, job market system in organization expected to provide employees with sufficient information on positions that are available within the organization which can help their development in career. Finally, management and information system refers to the chances to explore career development opportunities within the organization when the information is available. <clears throat> Other than that, organization career system also suggests team-based career system as one of the effective intervention. This is because several attributions such as team members act as role models, uh, team rewards enhance team and personal performance, team-based uh, team is used to determine both team and individual training need as well as individual performance can be replaced by team performance, collective team job movement and team's overall achievement helps organization to meet their goals are uh, some attributes that are very important to personal career development of the employees. Next, organizational career system require involvement and responsibility of employees from every level of organization and also the employer to result in success. For instance, other than employees duty to self-assess and put on effort to develop their own career, managers and supervisors often act as mentors, advisors and consultants uh, to encourage the employees and responsible to provide uh, enough information to support them. Other than that, human resources development and career development professionals also has a crucial role in the system where they are responsible in identifying potential uh, employees and providing opportunities for their career development as well as expose them to wider range of uh, of view on their career as a professional communicator. Furthermore, organizational career system can be carried out through various types of practices and activities. Starting from providing suitable system to nurture self-centered career development through individual self-assessment, career planning workshop and identifying personal career development, organization can also provide individual uh, counseling uh, opportunities to allow the employees explore their career together with uh, HR professional and their managers. Also, organization labor market information is important to support the employees prove their competencies and promote job movement uh, with organization other than organizational potential assessment process which allows the organization to identify potential employee uh, for advancement and promotion in various level of organization. In conclusion, organization career system promotes a healthy collaborative setting between organization and their employees to fulfill both their needs in the career through well-planned interventions and practices. Thank you. And next, I'm going to explain about the career path. Career path is a method by which an employee can develop and progress within an organization. It also refers to the growth of an employee in an organization in one's overall career. A career development path provides employees with an ongoing mechanism to enhance their skills and knowledge that can lead to mastery of their current job, promotions, or even transfer to a new or different position within the organization. Most companies plan career path for their employees to provide them a realistic picture of their position in the future to retain them. There are types of career path which is classified into two. Those were internal and external career path. In internal career path, a person moves into different role in the same organization. The other way in internal career path is a person moves from one unit to another unit acquiring different skills. 
as an example employees move from sales executive to finance department which requires different skills and responsibilities in external career path an employee move across different organization to move ahead in their career an employee can start in a particular position in one organization but can move to a better one in another organization for example moving from sales department of a company to move into a sales of software in another company which may require different challenges and roles besides that there are also some factors that influence an organization to embrace formal career path this includes inability to find recruit and place the right person in the right job employee disengagement employee demands for a greater workplace flexibility lack of diversity at the top a multi general workplace limited opportunity for advancement in flatter or a smaller organization and organizational culture change in this case career path become an effective strategic tool for achieving positive organizational outcomes they can be a means to ensure an organization's continuing growth and productivity there are some importance of career path firstly it gives an opportunity to achieve overall positive career development career path provides various options such as helps to determine how well a career could go further secondly makes a person could be more satisfied when they will be moving in a direct career direction that is designed to meet their lifestyle interest and financial goals thirdly a person can increasing responsibility this is when a person will have identified and gained the skills and training they need to take on more responsibility and that's all from me thank you thank you dantini and my name noafia binti ambran and i will talk about traditional career path traditional career path is about employee progresses vertically upward in the organization from one specific job to the next position traditionally when people talk about career path they were referring to a promotion and often refer to as a climbing the career the career uh, ladder employee at the moving up or their stock moving uh, traditional career uh, promise much in term of extra six uh, rewards they are often uh, perceived as less risky traditional career also provide a ready made platform for social connections and rec- recognition uh, traditional career path is now rare a uh, potential downside downside to traditional career is they require a willingness to comprom- compromise individual interests and preference in favor of collecting rules and standards not only is it interestingly uncommon to find someone who has worked at the same company for their entire life but it's also not longer the end goal this often mean uh, staying as long as you could at the same company and rewarding yourself with an impressive retirement package today the end goal is different uh, the marketplace has changed and there is ne- there is no uh, such, t- such thing as one linear career path network career path is a method of career path that contain both a vertical sequence of job and a series of horizontal opportunity this uh, recognize this path recognize the interchangeability inter- or experience at center at certain level and the need to broad experience at one level before promotion promotion to a higher level often the approach provide more realistic opportunity for employee development in an organization than does the traditional career path horizontal career move is a move across different de- uh, department within a company normally within a similar status tier and with comparable responsibility 
Meanwhile, vertical career move is more focusing on getting a promotion. Uh, vertical growth is uh, common. Uh, majority people uh, would focus on getting a higher position. Uh, typically, uh, when you grow vertically in your career, you will want a bump in pay and a higher status at your company. It is worth clarifying that horizontal growth and vertical growth do not exclude each other. Professional can keep uh, expanding their knowledge with different cap capability of moving horizontally while climbing the ladder. Both career moves are equally important in a career. By aiming to reach the top of paradigm is not enough. It doesn't make uh, a person a leader. Uh, not to try skipping over the important uh, milestone of your career just to get to the top quicker. The skill and uh, the skill and experience you learn along the way will set the foundation of what you need to be successful later in your career. Traditionally, a career path was viewed as a moving upward to the higher level of management in the organization. The the availability of the previous uh, two options has been dynamized considerably in the senior. But this, uh, this does not mean that an individual has to remain in the same job for life. They are often literal move within the firm that can be taken to allow employee to become uh, revitalized and find new challenges. Neither pay nor promotion may be included by, by learning a different job, employee can increase his or her value to organization and also become rejuvenated and re-energized. Lateral uh, career uh, move can happen within the same company or between different employers. Uh, the lateral uh, move provide a career path for, for employee uh, through additional training and new experience or respons responsibility. This may help the employee overcome broad problem and dissatisfaction that they uh, may have uh, had with the previous position. A literal move is viewed as a desirable by employee because of the impact a literal move has on the employee's opportunity for personal and professional growth and motivation. While a lateral move may not heavily affect uh, pay, the lateral move is often uh, accompanied by a small increase in responsibility. The worker may feel more connected with the business as they begin to have a broader influence on the decision process. A lateral move raises the standard of the employee. Uh, the move is visible, uh, visible sign of esteem from the employer that they are developing the employee and preparing them for a bigger and a better opportunity. Co-worker we see this as do manager. The lateral move is viewed as a continuing commitment from uh, employee to enable the employee to con uh, to continue to develop and grow in their employment and preserve a desirable career path. It is value as an opportunity poster. It is cherished by employee who are not uh, quite ready for for or an opportunity doesn't exist for a promotion. The employee career uh, will be continue to grow. Uh, the last one is a dual career path. Uh, a dual career path is a career path method that recognizes that uh, technical specialists can and should be allowed to continue to contribute the expertise to our company without having to become a manager. This dual career path typically serve as a way to advance employee who has deep uh, technical skills and education but who are not interested or inclined to pursue a management or supervisory track. Dual career path is more common in scientific, medical, information technology and engineering fields. One advantage of dual career path is that it's giving company an alternative uh, career path to offer 
employee in lieu of traditional promotion to supervisory or managerial positions. Some employee has no desire or aptitude for management, so the due care path provides outward mobility. In addition, uh, a due care path can potentially reduce turnover among sen senior staff by providing expanded career opportunity and it can allow employees to remain in their choose, uh, chosen uh, career and not be forced to move in to move into man managerial job just to get a pay increase. Dual uh, career path can also decrease pressure to create a special job just to give pay increase uh, increases to retain and uh, reward talented employees and can encourage employees to continually develop their skill and enhance their value to their organization. Uh, that's it from me and I will pass to next presenter. It is no longer common in today's world to meet a person who stays loyal to a company for a long period of time. The traditional career path is said to be over as individual and organizational goals have changed. Significant organizational changes in the workplace are widely notable especially for the past few decades. It is undeniable that these changes have reconstructed the essence of work in the organizational settings. Due to mergers, downsizing, stagnation, growth cycles, and re-engineering. Our world went through globalization throughout the years, which somehow affecting almost every organization in the industry, including the increased use of information technology at work, which changes the work contracts, and the employment of various alternative work strategies and schedules. As a result, career paths have become more dynamic and diverse. As on to another factor, paternalism was prevalent across the organization and employees expected job stability and that their employer would look after them in the exchange for their loyalty. Some academics, however, believe it is extinct and irrelevant in today's world. In an increasingly unstable organizational, cultural, and global environment, people must make career decisions. Individual job and career transitions have also gotten more difficult for the corporation to predict. The protein model in which people must take ownership of their own job advancement and career development is replacing the traditional career model. As following to this new career model, the employees must constantly develop new skills that will allow them to adapt to changing workplace needs in a variety of jobs and organizations. Moving on to the next factor, employees should nonetheless make plans for their future career when their career path is most certainly not linear. It is critical for the employee to consider their next professional move to ensure that they are investing in themselves and staying on the top of the employment market. One of the worst career blunders you can make is not making the proper career shift at the right moment. The employees should always keep an eye out for any warning signals that it is time to change careers. Even though the organization can give resources and tools to assist employees in growing their skills and abilities, uh, employees no longer have to rely solely on one as a company. And last but not least, with organizations increasingly expecting individuals to have a varied skill set and technology changing at a quick pace, uh, staying relevant is the most crucial professional goal. Remaining in the same field or even the same as a firm may result in a career that ends. It is critical to understand that if we do not expose ourselves to a variety of work situations or keep up with the latest advancements in our field, our abilities will eventually become obsolete. One of the best ways to cover all of our bases in terms of what the future may hold is to seek out diverse work experiences and deviate from a linear path. This could include a series of oblique moves uh, working for a contender or returning to school. Organizations need to have clear objective and strategic planning to sustain in their excellent position. The best organization is that to earn a profit while also developing their employees. 
Pupil development is the process through which an organization ensures that it can continue to run efficiently in the future. When designing career planning programs, human resource professionals must consider the hierarchy system in which they work. It is vital for effective career planning because there are a lot of people who approach career planning in a disorganized manner. If career planning is seen as more severe yet no evolution is met, or vice versa, the potential for one organization to fall is high. If the employer doesn't have an individual career plan for the employees, most of their employees will quit because there is no confidence in the career they are pursuing. An appraisal assessment is important for an employee for job placement in a company. In that way, we will know every potential of every employee and the employer can produce more excellent employees. Career orientation is a crucial phase for every worker, but most people treat it as a non-issue. The main goal of career planning is to identify our career goals and the period we will devote to each position. If an employee or an employer doesn't have a clear career orientation, they will just follow the progress without making any adjustments that are necessary for the best management. That's all from us. Thank you.